Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this full CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also, remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll see how to configure a switch to support wireless networks with a wireless LAN controller with a lab demo. I'm going to use Packet Tracer for this demo so you can see that I've got it open here. I've got my switch here in the middle. That's what I'm going to be configuring here. And it's connected to a wireless LAN controller, a couple of access points, and my admin laptop. And later on, I'm going to configure a corporate and guest WLANs. So because I've got the two different WLANs there, I'm going to need to have two different VLANs to support both of them. So what I'm going to configure here is I'm going to create my corporate VLAN and I'm going to create my guest VLAN. I'm also going to create a management VLAN as well for the wireless traffic. So the different types of traffic that is going to be on that management VLAN. When my admin laptop is connecting into the wireless LAN controller to configure it, that's going to be on the management VLAN and management IP subnet. Also, when the wireless LAN controller is communicating with the APs, that is going to be on the management VLAN as well. So I'm going to have that management VLAN with its associated IP subnet, and that's going to be used both for management of the WLC and also for WLC traffic to the APs and back again. You could split that into two different VLANs. I'm going to just use one VLAN for it here. So I'm going to have three different VLANs, the management VLAN, the corporate VLAN, and the guest VLAN. I'm also going to need to configure my switch ports as well. The WLC connection to the switch, that needs to be a trunk port to support all those different VLANs. For the AP connections going to the switch, those are going to be configured as access ports in the management VLAN. Okay, so let's get this all configured. So I will click on my multi-layer switch. Well, I'm coming in here, by the way, in Packet Tracer, a trunk port to the wireless LAN controller is not supported. So do not follow along with me as I do these lab demos, okay? Use the supplied lab exercise at the end of a section, which does have a trunk port going to the WLC, but I've got a workaround in there that's going to make everything work. Okay, so don't follow along with me. Wait till you get to the end of the section. Use the supplied lab exercise, and then everything will work just fine. Okay, so I'm on the switch here. I'll go to the command line. I'm going to go to the enable prompt, and then I'm going to go to global configuration. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create those VLANs. So first VLAN I'll do is the management VLAN. So with, for the design of what VLAN numbers you're going to use and what the associated IP subnets are going to be, in a real-world environment, you would work with the network designer to decide which VLANs and which IP subnets. So let's say that I've done that already, and we've decided that the management VLAN is going to be VLAN 10. So I'll create VLAN 10, and I'm going to give it the name of management. And then I'm going to want to have an SVI, a switched virtual interface, in VLAN 10 as well. So I'll create that. I'll say interface VLAN 10 here on my multi-layer switch. And I'm going to give that IP address 192.168. And this is going to be .10, which matches up with VLAN 10. And I will give this IP address .1. The subnet mask 255.255.255.0 so this is on my multi-layer switch and my multi-layer switch is going to be the default gateway for all of these different vlans and ip subnets it's going to be able to route the traffic between them so that's why i'm creating the interface vlan 10. okay so i've got the vlan created and i've given it an ip address on the vlan interface and my APs and also the management IP address for my wireless LAN controller are going to be in this VLAN and in this IP subnet. 
with my APs, when they get plugged in and they come online, I'm going to want them to communicate, to connect to the wireless LAN controller and download their configuration from there. So I'm going to be plugging the APs in. I want them to get connectivity to the wireless LAN controller. So they're going to need to get an IP address. So I need to configure a DHCP scope for that. You could use an external DHCP server for this. I'm going to do it here on the switch. So I'll go back down to global configuration and my subnet is 192.168.10.0 slash 24. I'm all using, I'm already using IP address dot one. So I don't want to go and give that out to host. So let's say that I will allocate addresses 192.168.10.101 2.254 with my DHCP scope. So I need to exclude the addresses 192.168.10.1 to 192.168.10.100 so that it starts giving out starting with address 101. So the command to do that, I will say IP DHCP excluded address and I want to exclude 192.168.10.1 to 192.168.10.100. So it'll start with the next address which is 192.168.10.101. Then I need to create my DHCP scope. So I say IP DHCP pool and give it a name. I'll call it management, which ties up with the VLAN name. And then the network that I'm going to be assigning addresses from is 192.168.10.0. The subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. The default router, so the default gateway, for this network is here on the switch. It's 192.168.10.1. And the other thing that I want to do is tell the access points where their wireless LAN controller is. So for that, I'll say option 43 IP. And my wireless LAN controller has got IP address 192.168.10.11. I've already statically assigned the IP address to the wireless LAN controller. Now, in this example, because the wireless LAN controller and the APs are in the same VLAN and the same IP subnet, I didn't actually need to do that because the APs would find the wireless LAN controller from a broadcast anyway. But if the APs and the wireless LAN controller are on a different subnet, well, routers don't forward broadcast, so that would not work. So in that case, you would definitely want to add the option 43 to your DHCP scope. Okay, so that is my management VLAN and DHCP scope all done. Next up, I need to create the VLANs for my wireless networks as well. So there was going to be one for corporate and one for guests. So let's do corporate first. And again, I've spoken to the network designer and they've told me use VLAN 22. So I'll create VLAN 22. I will say name corporate. And then... Again, this multi-layer switch is going to be the default gateway for the IP subnet. So I need to create the interface for that. So I will say, just to show you, this is back at global config again. I'll say interface, it's VLAN 22. And I'll give it IP address 192.168. And we'll say this is in subnet 192.168.22. Again, to tie up with the VLAN number and dot one for the default gateway. Subnet mask 255.255.255.0. Okay, so that is my corporate VLAN configured. Now, the wireless clients that are connecting into the corporate WLAN, they're going to need to get an IP address as well. So I also need a DHCP scope for them. But rather than creating it here on the switch, it's actually possible to configure a DHCP scope in the wireless LAN controller. So for my wireless clients, I'm going to create the DHCP scopes there in the wireless LAN controller. You'll see how to do that later on when I do that demo. Okay, so I've got my VLAN created for corporate. I need to do it for guest as well. So I'll say VLAN and we're using VLAN 23 here. The name is guest. And then because my switch here is a default gateway, again, I need to say interface VLAN 23 and give it the IP address 
23.1 with a slash 24 subnet mask. I don't need to do a, a no shut on these interfaces because they're virtual interfaces. They are not shut down anyway by default. Okay, so I've got my VLANs configured. Let's just check that that all looks okay. So I will do a show VLAN. And in here, I can see there's a couple of VLANs that were already created in my lab environment here, which was for the radius server and also for my admin laptop. So they were done already. And I can see the VLANs that I've created. There's VLAN 10 management and then VLAN 22 corporate and VLAN 23 guest. So that looks good. And I'll do a show IP interface brief and go down to the bottom. And there I can see VLAN 10 and VLAN 22 and VLAN 23. Now I can see the status is up down here. That's okay. It's just because none of my switch ports have been allocated to that VLAN yet. When I've done that, then the VLANs will come completely up. Okay. So that is my VLANs all created and also my DHCP scope done as well. Now what I need to do is configure the switch ports. So I will have a look back at the diagram again. So I need to configure this switch port here connected to the wireless LAN controller as a trunk port. And I also need to configure these switch ports here connected to my APs as access ports in the management VLAN. So let's do the wireless LAN controller first. So back on the switch again. I'm going to go back to global configuration again. And it is interface gigabit ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 5, which is connected to my wireless LAN controller. So let me just put in a description to see that. So I'll say description WLC. And then I need to configure this as a trunk port. The model of switch I'm working on here does support both .1Q and ISL trunking. So I need to specify that it is switch port trunk. Encapsulation is .1Q that I'm using here. The switch port mode is trunk. And then... Best practice, I want to limit the VLANs on this port to the ones that are actually going to be used. So I will say switch port trunk, allowed VLAN, and I'm going to allow my management VLAN 10, and then my VLANs for my wireless networks, which was 22 and 23. And then the connection to the wireless LAN controller it is not doubling back into other switches again. So I know that I'm never going to have a spanning tree loop going through this port. So I can also say spanning tree port fast just to disable spanning tree on the port. Okay, done. So that is my switch port connected to my wireless LAN controller done. I also need to configure the switch ports connected to the APs. So I will say, I'm going to, I'll do them both at the same time. So I will say interface range, and they are connected to gigabit ethernet 103 and 104. So I'll configure them both at the same time. I'll put a description in. So I'll say description wireless AP. And then I will say switch port mode is access. And then switch port, if I can type it right, switch port access VLAN was VLAN 10, the management VLAN. And again, I can disable spanning tree on here. So I'll say spanning tree port fast. Okay, and that is it done. What should be happening now is that the access points are going to get their IP address from the DHCP server running here on my switch. They'll then discover where their wireless LAN controller is and they should register to it. So let's just check that that is working. So I'll go back to my main packet tracer window here. I'll go to the admin laptop, which has got connectivity to the wireless LAN controller. I'll go to my desktop and then the web browser. And I need to use HTTPS to get to the admin GUI on my wireless LAN controller. And it has got IP address 192.168.10.11. So I'll click on go. And then that brings me to the login page for the wireless LAN controller. I'll click on login, enter in my username and password. 
and that will open up the dashboard on the wireless LAN controller. And in here, in the access point summary section, I can see that I have got two access points which are registered. Okay, so that is all good. I could also go to the access points in here on a real world wireless LAN controller to get more information, including their IP address. But this is all good in Packet Tracer. I can see that the APs are registered. So now I'm ready to move on with the rest of the configuration, actually creating my WLANs on the wireless LAN controller. And I'll do that in the next lecture. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can click on the link above my head or in the description to enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.